Why are we doing this? Why don't we consider all the effort that goes into it? Why don't we just watch it, you know? See the beauty in it. Look at the type. At the colors. At the story. After all, behind every title sequence lies a tedious process, design mixed with storytelling. Movie title sequences have been around since Thomas Edison. It started when he used a 2-inch strip of film to display his name and copyright. As movies got longer and the list of cast and crew expanded significantly, film studios started to recognize the importance of movie title sequences. Something that was originally invented to serve legal obligations became a medium of experimentation for graphic designers and filmmakers. Now, movie title sequences are an essential part of every cinematic experience. Opening titles set the tone of the movie, introduce the audience to the story, and immerse us into the fictional world we're about to enter. But who brings these title sequences to life? It's not the filmmakers or video editors alone. It's the graphic designers. In this video essay, we delve into the works of two legendary graphic designers who changed the course of this art form forever, Sol Bass and Kyle Cooper. It's impossible to talk about movie title sequences without mentioning Sol Bass. He was a legendary American graphic designer who is considered the father of movie title sequences and worked with the most renowned film directors of his time. His talent extended beyond opening sequences. He achieved great success as a graphic designer. That's not all. Bass also won an Oscar for a short film about the creative process called Why Man Creates. It's possible that if he didn't animate a title sequence for The Man with the Golden Arm, movie title sequences nowadays would look like this. Or maybe someone like Kyle Cooper would appear and elevate titles to a whole new level. Kyle Cooper, who rose to fame by making a title sequence for Seven, is considered the new soul bass of our time. He openly admits that he's inspired by Bass in his iconic works. In fact, you can see how he pays homage to Soul Bass in some of his works by skillfully imitating his visual style. It's obvious that both Bass and Cooper use graphic design to achieve their success. After all, graphic design is the main building block of every movie title sequence. The designer's use of typography, color, composition, sound, and editing is what ultimately determines whether the final result is a hit or miss. Bass is a minimalist when it comes to typography. He used simple but bold typefaces and effectively combined them with visual elements. He strikes a perfect balance between simplicity and experimentation, and he never fails to deliver impressive results. He was the first person to use kinetic typography in the movie North by Northwest. The typography itself became a visual representation of the main character's cross-country adventure, integrating the narrative into the opening sequence. In Psycho, Bass splits types into halves and pushes them out of the screen, creating tension. This visual technique serves as a powerful symbol, representing Norman Bates' internal battle with his fractured psyche. Kyle Cooper employs typography in symbolic ways as well. To create a handwritten look in the movie Seven, he scratched type directly into film and manipulated it to add smears, jitters, and other distressing effects. Typography in Seven effectively captures the essence of the serial killer and it feels like distorted text was written by the antagonist himself. In The Island of Dr. Miro, Cooper employs typography as a powerful symbol for mutations and the dangers that come with them. In fact, Cooper is famous for a technique called typographic method acting, which means he animates type in a way that is symbolic of the film's content. As you can see, typography is never isolated from the movie. Instead, it symbolizes the plot and character's journey. How about colors? Do they work by the same principles? Whether you're a graphic designer or simply a movie lover, everybody has associations with colors. Red evokes feelings of love, passion, danger, blood. Blue conveys trust and stability. Black is associated with mystery and power. These associations resonate with everyone. Now, let's talk about Sol Bass and his love for primary colors. Similarly to his typography, Bass preferred minimalism in his use of colors. He often relied on primary colors and combined them with blacks, whites, and grays. His love for simplicity and inclination towards limited color palettes is what makes his title sequences so recognizable. Each opening sequence can be associated with a specific color, and that alone is often enough to make it memorable for the audience. No wonder people immediately think of green when they hear about North by Northwest, or deep oranges and reds when they talk about Vertigo. Why 
While Bass had works where he used lots of colors, these instances were carefully thought out, aligning color palettes with the narrative. Kyle Cooper is not as minimalistic as Bass when it comes to colors. Generally, his approach to colors is context-dependent. In The Island of Dr. Moreau, he uses a wide range of colors, while in Seven, his color choice is very limited. It all depends on the plot and the genre. How about composition? In what ways does it affect opening sequences? Compositions shape visual storytelling and create balance. It guides the viewer and highlights what is important and what is secondary on the screen. Bass always emphasized the importance of the title of the movie and the directors by using bold and big type. Sometimes he uses similar compositions when he shows the names of the actors, as it happened in Casino in the Cape Fear. Bass follows the rule of thirds, effectively placing and aligning elements on the screen. On certain occasions, Bass demonstrated a preference for close-ups. He was fascinated with eyes, using them as frequently as possible. Kel Cooper expressed his love for close-ups in the movie Seven, capturing detailed shots of the serial killer and his evil doings. He used the same technique in Mimic, showcasing insects, newspaper clippings, and photographs of the victims. Let's not forget about the role of sound design in movie title sequences. Soul Bass recognized the power of sound and collaborated with the best composers. Just watch these titles with and without sound. See the difference? Sound heightens the emotional impact of the visuals. Look how the city of glamour and luxury, Las Vegas, can convey the character's descent to hell with classical music. The same principle applies to Seven, where the remix of Nine Inch Nails Closer serves as the perfect score for the sinister close-up shots of a serial killer. Sound design extends beyond musical scores. Effects like flutter of disturbing and things in Mimic or the voices of the victims in the Night Watch can evoke as many emotions as intense music. Editing and music always go hand in hand. Editing helps to establish the flow and the pace of the narrative. Movie sequences crafted by Soul Bass tend to be slower in pace. We can attribute this to the difficulty of editing videos during these times. Nowadays, video editing is accessible and affordable to everyone, while in the times of Bass, it was a tedious and demanding task. Kyle Cooper's title sequences are much faster. In today's digital age, the audience pays less attention to the information presented in the sequences, since everything can be found online. As a result, designers place a greater emphasis on creating visually appealing sequences that capture attention, opting for speedy and dynamic opening titles. While graphic design is important, combining great design with good storytelling is what makes title sequences truly remarkable. Soul Bass liked to use a technique he called summarizing and symbolizing. He reduced movies to a single symbol and emphasized it in the sequence. That's why we associate the man with the golden arm with a jagged arm, vertigo with lissajou waves, and anatomy of murder with a cutout figure with disjointed limbs. He used these symbols everywhere. Movie sequences, posters, you name it. His opening sequences had a beginning, middle, and end, something that wasn't done by designers that came before him. Kyle Cooper likes to use symbols and summarize the movies as well. In his sequences, he shows bits and pieces of the characters and the plot, introducing the viewer to the story. But how about technology? It changes and evolves rapidly over the years. It's clear that Cooper doesn't face the difficulties that Sol Bass encountered. Computers and software make it easier to experiment and achieve certain results. However, if you think that Kyle Cooper always uses the latest technology, you'd be wrong. What makes his title sequences so great is that he likes to experiment with traditional mediums as much as combining them with computers. One can argue that the limitations that Soul Bass faced were the catalyst for his greatness. Would he use a tank filled with diluted ink and hair dryers to make the sequence for the Cape Fear if he had advanced software? Would his work look so rough and handmade? Would he limit his color palettes to only primary colors? We'll never find out. We can only assume that sometimes, technology takes away from creativity instead of reinforcing it. As you can see, movie title sequences is not just a legal obligation of merely listing names. They became an art form by themselves, setting the tone of the movie, introducing the characters, and conveying the genre. Soul Bass and Kyle Cooper definitely play an important role in the development of opening sequences. 
Their solid graphic design skills, love for experimentation, and strong visual storytelling makes them the true masters of their craft.